Hi, this is Francisco Pulgar Vidal with FKI Quality, and today I would like to talk to you about the road to improvement. Especially, how do we work to ensure first stability of a process and then improvement, and how to show this using control charts. I just mentioned that there really are two major steps. The first step, and foremost, is lead to stability. So, can we make our process stable? Once stability is achieved, at least for the foreseeable future, then we need to think about how we can improve them. And so that will be the second step. This, is a, this sequence is very important. We need to know that this is the right sequence because trying to improve something that hasn't been stabilized is like building on sand. It's where you will have an edifice, you have a, a house or a tower, and it's just going to fall over because it will not have a, um, a sustainable uh, uh, foundation. So this is the, the way to do it. So how do we understand stability? The great tool to tell us what, when a process is stable or not is called the control chart. The control chart is, uh, looks like a run chart, and it would look something like this, where you will have over time, a certain variable of interest. I'm plotting here what's going to be known as an IMR chart, individuals and moving range chart, just individuals part, or an XMR chart. And so let's say that over here you have, for the particular value that we're looking at, this could be the average value and over here you may have the upper control limit or upper natural limit and here the lower control limit or lower natural limit. And so the function could be over time taking on different values. Like for instance you could have one value over here and then the next time is over here and then you're over here and then you're over here. And what you can see here is that the control chart is telling us what is the range of natural variation. This is a range of natural variation. Therefore, that value over there is very likely that if the process gave us that uh, su such a high value compared to all of the other ones, the most likely uh, explanation is that there was a certain force at play, a certain factor was happening at that point in time which kind of took on an oversized strength and moved the process into a different direction outside of what had been the, the, the norm up to this point. And so what we say here is that what we have is a process that is not in control. That means it's not predictable. Now, initially, from practice, we know that most processes are like this. This is sort of like the natural condition. So initially what you have is a, um, an unpredictable process. Another term for this is, we may say, is not in control. So clearly this is not a, a, a situation that we want to be in because a process that is not in control, that is not predictable, cannot be improved. So our first task is going to be to turn this into a process that is in control, where all the variation that we see is just due to the a system of common causes and there are no special causes. That would look more or less like this if we were to kind of continue this chart over here with you know, the same broad parameters and indicators of performance. Then in this case, the operation would simply take on different values which may indicate that it varies over time again. Uh, but we don't see any particular point outside of the limits, which is always the first question that you want to ask, or 
any of the be different behaviors that may indicate a shift in the average, even if it is inside of these limits. So in this second situation, what you have here is that there's only common causes of variation. When this is the case, we actually have achieved a, a, a major accomplishment, which is that the process is predictable. And therefore, man the managers, the, the, the persons in charge of this process, can now think about how to plan for it, how to budget for it, how to staff for it. Uh, so it becomes a, a manageable process, as opposed to something that is always uh, at risk of giving us a surprise, usually not a desirable surprise, not a good surprise. And so the process is predictable and can be managed, you know, manageable. Now, having said this, having said that we have here an upper control limit and a lower control limit, however, <laughs> doesn't tell us that this process is satisfying or that it is capable, that it does what it was supposed to do. Let's say we have a different, uh, a different set of numbers here, which would describe um, a set of limits which are called specification limits or tolerances or maximum allowable um, indicators of performance. And so in that case, we could have something like this. Let's say that we have that the, actually the upper and lower specification limits which give us the, co the customer tolerance. What if they were, well, let's say something like this, that they are over here. I'm writing these ones in a different color to indicate that they have nothing to do really with the upper and lower control limits. That is, they represent the voice of the customer. They represent what must happen. What we had here in blue, first of all, was what is the voice of the process. This is how the process is behaving because the process is a system of causes that uh, one of which um, manifestations or, or, or metrics is this particular variable X that happens to have this behavior. Then what we would need to do is now work in such a way that would allow us to fit these control limits to be inside of the spec limits so that then we would be successful and, 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 and capable on a sustainable basis. So what that would mean is that we would have to have, let's say, something like this, where we would now be operating at a new sigma, let's call it, uh, or rather at a new average, uh, x prime, and then we would have to also reduce the variability of our operation in such a way that the upper control limit and the lower control limit may be inside of what the specification have to be. And so in this case, if we maintain the predictability of the process and we work to lower the average, put the average where it needs to be, and also reduce the variation so that it meets the requirements of our customers, then we will have a process that is going to be both in control and also is going to be a capable process. This is how the road to improvement looks like. This is how you move from what unfortunately tends to be the most common situation to one that is uh, in control, that is uh, stable, and in addition to this, now we will have a process that is not only stable, but it is also capable. And it's going to be capable in a sustained way. That is free of surprises or another way of saying this would be uh, predictable. And so this is really what we want to have. Now, how do we get from one to the other? There are many tools that can help us do this. When we need to identify what is a, a special cost of variation, which is what you would have here, I will add that to here now. So this means that 
the fact that the process is unpredictable, it's not in control, is because there are special causes are present. So in order to move from, from here to here, a typical tool that we could use would be really a, a, a discovery of what's happening or what was happening in this particular time. So go to the Gemba, study the process, speak with the subject matter experts, figure out what was happening, and then try something, try some to make some incremental changes that may help us. This uh, could be called a, a Kaizen project, could be called the application of the Plan, Do, Study, Act cycle of learning that we learned from Deming and Schuhart. And this, will, this should be useful uh, in order to eradicate that special cause. Now, when only the common causes of variation are, in, are present, then what needs to change is not just maybe one particular thing, but the whole system. And one of the great tools to help us understand the system of causes underlying this would be, in, and, and therefore the tool that may help us move from this situation to the next one and improve performance, would be uh, a tool such as you know, the fishbone, along with any other experimentation tools that we may have in order to try different things and change the actual makeup of the system. So in summary, the road to improvement moves from lack of predictability to a predictable process and then on to a capable process. And the way in which teams um, uh, walk this road of improvement is by using tools in order to address each one of the special causes with tools such as PDSA or Kaizen and then to actually improve the system of production and the system of causes with tools such as the Fishbone Diagram. Thank you for your time.